Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how to get Google sign in in your Flutter web project. So you can sign in like a normal website by just clicking sign in and the sign in pop-up for Google accounts will have been displayed with your project name on top and then you can just type in your email and password and with that, you are able to just go and log in as a normal Google user. So let's get on with the video. So as you can see over here, I have the Google sign in package in the pub.dev. And if you were to look down, there isn't any web implementation, just Android and iOS. So one thing to note is that instead of using the official package, you have to go to the Google sign in web package instead. So this will give you instructions on how to put in Google sign in inside your Flutter web project. So the first thing is to install Google sign in inside your PubSpec YAML. So let's do that. So make sure Google sign in is installed you don't have to install the Google sign in web because it is already implemented inside the Google sign in so once you have installed Google sign in the next thing is to go through the instructions to create your Google sign in OAuth client ID so you click here and it will redirect you to this Google sign in for website documentation so the next thing that you need to do is to scroll down and you will see you have to specify your app client ID. Back in the Google sign in web flutter package, it requires this meta tag which has your Google sign in OAuth client ID. On the specify your app client ID step, you can click on this to get the client ID. However, most of the time you don't have the OAuth client credentials. So what you need to do is you can either do it two ways. First, if you were to have a Firebase project or you have to create your own project. So I'm going to do the Firebase project way. Meaning other than my first project, all of these projects are my Firebase project. So I'm going to use my links production and then go to the developer console. So the thing is, if you have a Firebase project, most of the keys are auto created by Firebase or Google service. But for Firebase project, most of the time, your client ID over here, OAuth 2.0 client ID under the web client is auto created by Google service. What we need is this your Google sign in client ID that ends with apps.googleusercontent.com so if you were to click on it then you'll see your client ID over here so you just have to copy and paste it over here now if you don't have a Firebase project what you can do is if you have an empty project inside the Google APIs or console.developer.google then what you need to do is to create a credential under OAuth 2.0 client ID. So you have to create the credentials and under OAuth client, click it. Then in order for you to create an OAuth client ID, you have to configure your consent screen. So the thing is, if you're not a G Suite user, you can only make the app available to external users. So once this is done, so type in your application name, for example, my first project and scroll down and you can just save this. All right, so your consent screen is saved. It's okay if it's not published because we are just testing this out inside the development environment. So let's go back to credentials. So let's create a credentials OAuth client ID. And now this application type menu over here is clickable so click on web application then the next thing is to have the web client one doesn't really matter of the name 
and under the authorized JavaScript origins, this is where you want to put your local host. So let's copy this HTTP local host with the colon, paste it over here, and let's put 5000 to be our default local host. So let's create this. And now you have created your OAuth client. So you press OK. And now if you click on this, you could see the client ID has been created for you. So it's the same thing if you have a Firebase project, the client ID will be created for you. So under the URIs, make sure you just have HTTP localhost 5000. So for Firebase, you will have localhost, localhost 5000, and the default Firebase app link for your Flutter web if you were to use it to host on Firebase hosting. So we are more concerned on this because it will use this URI for our development purposes. So you can copy the client ID over here. So you can go to your index.html file and insert your client ID over here. So once you have set your URI to the local host of 5000, then the next thing is to run your Flutter web in a specific web port. So if you were to use VS Code, there is this thing called a launch JSON. So what you can do is to click on the debug and you could see it says here to customize, run and debug. Create a launch JSON file. So you click on it and you click on this Dart and Flutter. So it will create a launch.json file for you. So the next thing is to create the argument key with the value of this web port 5000. So basically you just wanted this at the end of your Flutter web launch. At the same time with this Flutter name, you can type in with web port 5000. So if you save this, this will rename your debugger over here. So we have set our web port to the specific URI that has been created earlier for us. Now the next thing is to use our plugin. So we can import our plugin using this and then have our Google sign in to be initialized with the different scopes. However, we are unable to use this contact scope because inside our OAuth consent screen, which is basically the sign-in page that you usually see when you click on the Google sign-in button. The default scopes that you're allowed to see is your email, profile, and open ID. If you want to add your own scope, then what you need to do is you need to publish and verify your app because with the permissions, you are able to control the user's data and such. That's why you need to verify and it will probably take you more than a few weeks to get verified. So for this example, we just need to see their email and maybe their Google profile picture. Now let's go to the Flutter package, the example that's given. And they have already created an example for us. So what we can do is just, we can copy this whole thing. So what I normally do is to go to raw and I just command or control A. And I'll go to my main.dart file and I paste it over here. So make sure you overwrite your whole default app in your Flutter project. So the first thing is that we, we are not using context API, so we just delete this. Then we go down and then you could see inside the init state, we have this stream on current user change. So we are listening to whether the user has signed in using Google sign in. And the next thing is that if it's signed in, then we will override the current user with the account that is returning. If the current user is not now, it will handle get contact. So we are not going to use this handle get contact. So we just remove this and we will just remove this whole handle get contact. And we also remove this pick first name contact 
and just highlight both of them and delete them we will need this handle sign in we will need this handle sign out and then we will need this build body however we don't need this handle contact method so we will remove this raised button and I think that's about it so this is good enough for us to test our Google sign in account and we can just remove the imports and at the same time we also can remove so let's save this all right so make sure that your flutter with web port is selected so you can create different configurations but we're going to use this configuration and we'll just start our debug mode so you now have this home page that says google sign in you're not currently signed in and you have the sign in button over here so if you were to click on this sign in button sign in window pop up and you could see that your name of the project will pop up also so you can type in any of your email and now you could see that your face have suddenly appear if you were to use chrome this will also make your chrome sign in as well so that's pretty cool all right so one thing that i want to show is that it also automatically signs you in if you were to go to another tab so you just copy and paste over here and once it finished loading it signs in for you automatically how is that so so this line of code actually helps you sign in silently meaning that once you open a page with this code it will help you sign in silently if you are previously authenticated without any interaction so this helps your user go to the page without having to sign in again so once you sign out it will then automatically sign out so if i were to go to the same page i'm not automatically signed in because i have signed out so it's fairly simple and you can display the current user which is the google sign in account object that allows you to return a display name and email and also you can use this google user circle avatar which will take in the identity of the current user and that's where you are able to see your face of your google account so that's about it if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want more of this video subscribe down below and comment down on what other flutter web integrations you need help with stay safe and all the best bye bye <laughs>